and welcome to a film mixologist the place on the internet thingy where we retrace the customer experience <clears throat> case in point what i've got here which is um a set of brand new never used weber power plates and in this video what i'm, what I'm gonna go through is i'm gonna go through um what are the um, well, I'll see the characteristics of it very quickly, but also why uh, did this product really never take off? And I can and I can show you why by showing you the customer experience. Um, but I do have one very important thing to clarify, which is that whilst I am going to say a couple of things that are going to be slightly critical of this product. I have to tell you one thing right right from the off. In today's day and age, you know, where everything is made in China and that kind of stuff, you are never, ever, ever going to find something that has better quality and engineering than this old stock stuff. Just forget about it. These things were made at a time where quality and engineering meant something, which unfortunately in this day and then and age that, that that's no longer the case. So if you do care about quality, uh, then do stay on because because you you're gonna love this uh, this episode. So let's so let's make a start, and uh, and I'm gonna show you kind of what this is meant to do. So. Basically, if you have this, obviously this is a, like a scrap cup that I got for demonstration purposes. In this case, a double pumper. But let's say you've got you, you, you. I'm in the 80s. Yeah, let's take a time machine back to the 80s, and I've got a holy double pumper that I want to kind of extract a little bit more performance from. Yeah, so. I received some marketing material from Holly, or I read an article in a, in a, in a magazine or something, and it's going, oh, the world power play, the, the, that could be a winner. So first of all, I need to go to a, like a speed shop or, or to some sort of uh, retailer uh, that, 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 that has these things. So what are the two things that I need to buy? Yeah, because let, let, let me show you a little bit closer how these items came packaged. Okay, so let's do an individual one for starters. Uh, so the items, the item came packaged. Let me open it up very carefully. There we go. As you can see, it's still kind of mostly in its um, in its original uh, in its original box. It has kind of original kind of gaskets, and crucially, this gasket kind of in the middle. Uh, more on that more on that later and let's let's get this down here so the item came really well packaged and protected like this so you take off so you take off the plate kind of like so and this is basically kind of your wearer power plate and what it does it essentially it converts a holly carb so let me put this my scrap carb it converts your carb like this so that you can run Weber IDA circuits on it yep so you and the good thing about it is that also you can kind of change stuff uh, at will uh, without having to unscrew the bolts so that's already kind of a win for this product um, and just look at the quality obviously the, the, the you, you can't you can't see it probably from there but obviously i'm i'm i worked with this units for 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 a very long time and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you can feel the quality uh that that this thing is made uh, again in this day and age this level of quality is pretty much unobtainable so but well, 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 what was the thing? I've got I've got all these bits, but then it doesn't stop there because I need what is called well, well, what what they call a calibration kit. Um, and here we're gonna see some, some some because in the calibration kit you had your idle holders, your idle jets, 
and then you have your main your emulsion tubes your air correctors for the emulsion tubes your main jets and your um, the arm for the accelerator pump um, and this unit here is it's really a, like a push tool to install um, to install the power valve channel restrictions that basically go here so essentially what this is let me show you let me let me show it this kind of next to next to a standard uh if you want um holy metering block so this hole here is this the only thing is that in in the weber power plate you can insert different sizes so you have like an endlessly variable power valve channel with the with the with the Weber power plate that you you do not have with the, with your standard um, Holly metering block. So that is kind of the in a sense the customer the the, the customer experience. Um, so I have to not only buy kind of one of these and one of these for the primary, but also let's say i've got again my holy double bumper example here i need to purchase yet another weber power plate and yet another calibration kit for the secondary so all of a sudden now we start going we start kind of the expense starts going up uh, quite significantly so uh was it worth it at the time eh, marginally i think uh, so the tests that were conducted kind of at the time they did indicate that um, the Weber power plates did have a power advantage over the uh, your kind of like regular holy carb um, so in a sense yes it did have some sort of advantage uh, but it was kind of limited yeah it did have a power advantage but it was kind of if you wanted to have like that edge over the competition, then yes. Certainly another advantage was the tunability. But the problem is that, again, if I have a carb that has its kind of, its, its, its original, you know, metering block, kind of, kind of a bit like this one, uh, then I have to purchase an entire thing plus the tuning. And here is where things started to get a bit kind of awry uh, for this product. And you can see it, it's interesting to see it in this kind of in this power plate that I bought here. Because if you if you look if you look here, you have got already the customer has tried maybe made a start into trying to make it work and what you can see here is these two things they are idle jet holders from a Weber DCOE however the problem is that you can see it here if but let me put one that I've got this is the idle holder from a Weber power plate and this is from a Weber um, DCOE and as you can see they are not the same they are different yep so if you try to if you try to use a DCOE um, um, idle jet holder on a power plate it wouldn't work so I, I think the customer tried to the person that had it before me Try to buy one of these and then realize oh this doesn't work um same thing with this day you do have an emulsion tube um you do have the emulsion tube but if you look at the this the holder for the emulsion tube is different in the weber power plate than in the weber carbs so this isn't compatible so what you got here is you got a situation where you have you know quite a lot of kind of very key parts that are proprietary and are only used for this so therefore 
I would say the flexibility of the product is just not quite as it used to be because if I want to vary the idle air corrector, uh, then I would have to purchase uh, more of these, uh, which by the way, as you can see, I also carry, you know, one or two spares of, the, of these as well. Ah, oh, this one is brand new. Because, let me show you how they differ from the standard Weber. Yes? So, coming back here, but what you can, uh, hopefully you can see in there, the normal Weber, um, this is a normal Weber DCOE kind of idle, idle jet. The normal Weber idle jets, they have this little hole in here, whilst the power plate jets, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, they haven't got any hole on the side. And that's how you determine that this is a power plate jet, because you haven't got this hole here in the middle. Um, because the air corrector is part of this assembly here, and it has this O-ring to make sure that the air doesn't uh, doesn't get through so you already have a lot of kind of proprietary stuff built into this and i think that kind of if i'm i'm i'm, I'm thinking ahead of, of myself here a little bit but what i'm thinking that happened in this particular occasion is that the customer maybe bought this stuff the person i bought it from and open the package, which obviously they did, and they started like screwing about with it until they realized, oh, hang on a minute, I won't be able to make it work. Uh, so therefore, I think that's where they got maybe frustrated and they, they decided to just, you know, persevere with my normal Weber metering, uh, Holly metering block, sorry, and just, you know, put that and just send that because this this is starts, starts being a little bit of faff, uh, and therefore that's how it remained in a cupboard and somewhere for years until obviously it was unearthed and I and I managed to purchase purchase it. Which, by the way, as you can see here, I may have a few of them in stock. You know, just. Just so that I don't run out. And, and and here's my point. The reason why I've got so many of this is because in reality I'm a sucker for quality. Because uh, again, I can I can guarantee that you will never find something of this quality in this day and age. It's just like not not even possible. Um, which is, which is unfortunate and that's why I have managed to accumulate so many of these things because I do believe uh, that there is going to be a time where people are going to kind of seek them out because of their quality um, and also apart from obviously the tunability which is great and for example if you are you know racer racing in a circuit uh, with this sort of carbs you really want to want to have a look at this thing why because what they allow you to do is they allow you to do all the changes of jets from up here both the both the idle and the main and the main circuit and what that does is that it saves you a lot of time in the pits so if you are in a, in a racing situation car comes in the pits it's running a bit lean okay i can take out take out the jets maybe Put put on some some bigger jets. Poof, you just send them down the track, and and that's it. In a in a traditional holly, what you would have to do is you have to take the fuel bowl, swap the jets here, and then send it. But at the, at that point, taking fuel bowls uh, from a hot engine is not really that great. Uh, and also kind of putting them back means probably changing gaskets and that kind of stuff. So you're looking at a fair at a fair chunk of time saved by using these things. But again, I think that at the time this product came out, it was just too advanced for the kind of average user. And also 
you have to bear in mind one thing and the clue is what it says on the box you know brings your holly into the 80s so at the time at, at this time kind of if i was a user and i wanted more performance i could go this route but also at this time also kind of fuel injection had, had it was starting to come on the scene so therefore i think a lot of people kind of had a look at this had a look at the cost and it, it must have been there or on a par with the fi so they said do you know what this isn't worth it sorry i'm just gonna go fi and i think that's the problem that's why this product was a you know commercial failure in a, in a sense however again i can't stress this enough from an engineering point of view this product is absolutely amazing and the quality is just unobtainable these days uh, but anyway um, I hope you kind of got something got something out of this uh, video um, obviously I've got I've got a few <laughs> if you, you want to make an inquiry uh, but if not uh, I want to say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode